I'm Dr. Elizabeth Brown, and I'm a urologist here at MedStar Georgetown University Hospital, and I specialize in female pelvic medicine and reconstructive surgery. I see a variety of patients, both men and women, with urinary tract problems, such as overactive bladder, pelvic prolapse, urinary incontinence, and BPH. I also treat general urology conditions like hematuria or blood in the urine and kidney stones. Unfortunately, patients are presenting at a very frustrated point and often have been trialed on many medicines or procedures that don't work for them. Oftentimes, stress urinary incontinence, for instance, is underreported and it's been shown that actually half of women throughout the world have some form of incontinence. By the time patients get to me, they're usually desperate for a long-term procedure that can give them a definitive repair. Typically, I treat patients with conservative therapy like lifestyle modification or maybe medical therapy at the beginning. However, if patients are not happy with this, we can move on to surgical management or procedural-based therapies, which are better long-term options. Here at MedStar Georgetown University Hospital, our urology department offers a variety of specialists who are fellowship trained. For instance, I did my fellowship in female pelvic medicine and reconstructive surgery and can offer surgical procedures for overactive bladder or stress urinary incontinence. For patients with vaginal prolapse or a dropped bladder, some patients are candidates for robotic surgery where we can actually pull the top of the vagina back to the normal anatomic position. I think the urology team here at MedStar Georgetown University Hospital is a great collaborative group. We enjoy working with each other, but also can consult with each other in difficult cases. I love treating urinary incontinence because it's something that can greatly impact a patient's quality of life. I like being able to give patients the opportunity to pick up their grandkids again without leaking, or go shopping, or travel on a plane when before they couldn't leave the house. It's truly a special job that I have here, being able to talk to patients about problems that are so sensitive they don't even share it with their loved ones or their significant others. And to be able to give patients back that quality of life, it's truly rewarding and I do love my job. Urinary incontinence is the involuntary loss of urine. There's actually several types of incontinence, such as stress incontinence, where you can leak when you're coughing, sneezing, standing, or picking up something heavy, or urge incontinence, where you have a sudden urge to urinate and can't make it to the bathroom in time. Some patients actually have a mixture of both, and so we need to figure out which option is more bothersome initially and start with that. Urodynamics is an office-based test that gives us a lot of information about how the bladder stores and releases urine. We can evaluate the bladder, the urethra, the sphincters, and the prostate in men as well. Urodynamics really helps us get information about what's bothering the patient. Sometimes it's hard for them to explain when they're leaking urine or when they have pain in their bladder, for instance. So this gives us a lot of information to help guide treatment and help discuss treatment options with our patients. Urodynamics is an office-based test where we put a small catheter in the urethra and a small catheter in the rectum. Then we fill the bladder with fluid to simulate the need to urinate, and that way I can really understand what's going on with the patient's bladder. Unfortunately, overactive bladder is often untreated and underdiagnosed. Conservative options are the first-line therapy for overactive bladder, which include behavioral modifications such as decreasing your caffeine intake or pelvic floor exercises with physical therapy. However, if this doesn't work, there are medicines that we can try, but ultimately a lot of patients need or want a better long-term option such as bladder Botox, where we put a small amount of Botox in the bladder, or even place a bladder pacemaker, which can help control the bladder. We can perform bladder Botox either in the office or in the operating room, depending on the patient's level of comfort. In the office, we use a little numbing medicine, and in the operating room, we can even give patients a little light anesthesia as if they are gonna have a colonoscopy. 
Bladder Botox can last on average for around seven to eight months. Some patients may need this more frequently and others can go as long as a year, but it does need to be repeated. Overactive bladder is the need to urinate more frequently than a patient would like, typically with urgency and frequency where they're feeling like they need to run to the bathroom all the time. Some patients can actually have incontinence or leak with these episodes while others just have the frequent need to urinate. It really depends on the patient's preference. Some patients do like to undergo the Botox procedures, which can only be once a year on some patients. However, there is a long-term option such as the bladder pacemaker, which can currently last for about five years. The bladder pacemaker is a two-step procedure in the operating room where we place a small wire in the back and it sends pulses to the bladder to help regulate it for patients that either urinate too frequently or not often enough. If this works, they do get a trial week and then we place the battery, which lasts for about five years, underneath the skin where they can't feel it. Stress incontinence can be treated conservatively or with procedure therapy. Unfortunately, there's no medicine that's approved for stress incontinence. So the most definitive option is typically a sling type procedure, either with synthetic material or the patient's own tissues. Treating men with urinary issues can certainly be complicated because it can be a prostate problem, a urethra problem, or even a bladder problem. Oftentimes, we may need to do urodynamics to figure out which of these is really causing the issue, but we can try patients on medicines or perform outpatient procedures to improve their urinary symptoms. Neurourology is the study of the kidney and bladder or urology problems as a result of a neurologic diagnosis. For instance, patients with MS or a spinal cord injury or patients who have had a stroke or other neurologic diseases, those can actually really affect the urinary system. And so my goal is twofold as a urologist. Number one is always to protect the kidneys because neurologic problems can actually affect the bladder and cause permanent damage to the kidneys. But number two is to really improve patients' quality of life because oftentimes the patients with neurologic problems within the bladder leak large amounts of urine and are very bothered by this. Patients with neurologic problems oftentimes can have decreased sensation to the bladder, and the bladder can have more urine in it, which actually over time causes high pressures and can damage the kidneys. So the first thing the patients do when they come to see me is evaluate the urinary tract completely, including pictures of the kidneys, like with an ultrasound or a CAT scan. Then we look to see how the bladder is actually functioning by doing urodynamics with x-ray equipment to make sure that their bladder is not at a dangerous level that would hurt the kidneys. And then oftentimes we try to treat the patients who are leaking urine from below with bladder Botox, for instance. Unfortunately, any neurological condition can affect the urinary tract. So the most common patients that I see either have a spinal cord injury multiple sclerosis, or have had a recent stroke, or even lumbar surgery or spinal surgery, all of these things can affect the urinary tract. Pelvic organ prolapse can occur when the tissues of the pelvic floor become weak. Oftentimes, patients report a bulge in the vagina or have difficulty emptying their bladder. Typically, I have a conversation with the patient to determine what's the best treatment approach for them. There are conservative treatments, such as a pessary or a round device that can be placed in the vagina to hold it in place, or more definitive options, such as surgery. These can either be with robotic surgery, where we reapproximate the natural angle of the vagina, or we can make incisions through the vagina so that we don't enter the abdomen at all.
Within my specialty, I typically treat pelvic organ prolapse or incontinence, but I also can treat urethral diverticulums and vesicovaginal fistulas. I also treat patients with hematuria or blood in their urine, kidney stones, and BPH. Urology is a very dynamic field and oftentimes medical students like to go into urology because we've been one of the more innovative specialties. In fact, we have several clinical trials that we're trying to bring here to Georgetown Hospital with innovative therapies for patients. A lot of patients unfortunately think they have to suffer with urologic problems, but actually there's a lot of new technology and innovative therapies that we can use to help patients. We have very comfortable and soft, flexible scopes compared to the old rigid scopes that we used to have. We also are using the robot to help with certain procedures, and we also are doing many clinical trials and using unique therapies in order to treat patients.